With the Latino population growing in the United States, networks are increasingly tapping into a new audience by introducing Spanish language content to a Spanish-speaking audience. Well, currently there are programs that are helping Latinas who have already attempted to commit suicide, but there has been very little progress to help those before they commit the act. Political clubs, once the heart of many New York neighborhoods, have been disappearing for decades. But as Jacqueline Quinn reports in this week's Morningside segment, the Broadway Democrats are making their voices heard. Y la protesta llega en un momento en la cual la legislatura estatal debate una propuesta que castigaría empleadores que abusan de sus trabajadores. At 16 years old, Karina Cuevas was on her way to success. My goal was to go to college, you know, get a degree, and aside from that, jump off and do something helpful and beneficial for others. But her hopes masked a darker reality. She was feeling bullied in school and isolated at home. Got to the point where I just did not want to live anymore. And I decided to wolf down like a bunch of pills. And I thought, you know, that was going to be the solution for it all. One in six Latina high school students attempted to commit suicide in 2009, according to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. In Brooklyn, it was about one in five, twice the national average. Dr. Rosa Gill leads an organization that helps suicidal Latinas. She says the Latino culture plays a major role. We Latina women, from the moment that we are born, we are being raised into gender roles that the Latino community, the Latino culture, for years have had. Moving back and forth from the Dominican Republic to New York City, Karina was caught in the middle of two cultures. I grew up in a very strict household. My dad, as a typical Latino, is, you know, the type of boys can do everything, girls are limited. And that was what really got to me, because I was always trying to prove to my dad that I could do anything a guy could do. The pressure grew and Karina fell into a deep depression. It's the worst feeling in the world. You feel like the world's ending for you. You're hopeless, you're empty. Her attempt didn't work. Years later, she's on her way to graduate school to fulfill the dream that years ago, she left on hold. What these kids don't notice is that while they're having fun, they just might be saving their own lives. Local organizations in Inwood are fighting the staggering childhood obesity rates affecting the community by providing a place for families to be active. It was really good for the whole family. Not a lot of programs get to include the whole family. In the past 20 years, the rates of childhood obesity have drastically increased among low-income and minority communities to realities that are specially common in neighborhoods like Inwood and Washington Heights. I think that it's always hard when you're trying to work in a community that has uh, lots of resources but also lots of needs. Across the U.S., one in every five kids are considered obese, but in Inwood and Washington Heights, the number doubles to one in every two. It's not about telling children that are fat that they have to lose weight. It's not about focusing on the obese kids. It's about really promoting health and nutrition and making it, uh, giving it a positive message. And children in these programs are starting to feel the burn. It was kind of hard, but I still tried. Local organizations say they will continue to work tirelessly until their kids are no longer another statistic. <laughs> Ignacio Torres, Columbia Television News. Sometimes you gotta say what the... Sunglasses are everywhere. From magazine covers to classic films, they've been a fashion staple for decades. Won't you join me? And millions of New Yorkers have. First and foremost is style. I usually go for the frames. Well, I, I want them to be cool. Even at my age, I love uh, to, to have what I consider cool. But sunglasses are much more than just a fashion statement. They protect your eyes from ultraviolet UV rays that could lead to diseases like macular degeneration and cataracts. So the idea is to limit your exposure uh, to UV light as much as possible. Sunglasses come in styles from basic to designer. They range from $5 to over $500, 
But do higher prices mean better UV protection? I personally don't see any difference from a $5 model to a $100 model. With the help of Dr. Jerry Rapp, we put this to a test. With a pair of $8 sunglasses from a street vendor and a pair of pricey designer sunglasses. This machine detects what percentage of UV rays passes through the glasses. The transmission is 0%. Again, the transmission is 0 We have checked in the past just randomly uh, and it seems that all the sunglasses that we looked at, regardless of price, from very cheap ones to very, very expensive ones, all seem to have very good uh, UV blockage. And regardless how dark the sunglasses are, most come with a UV filter that block harmful rays. So next time you go out to buy your own pair of sunglasses, keep an eye out for the 100% UV protection label. If you're still skeptical, you can always go to your local optician and get your sunglasses checked. Ignacio Torres, Columbia News Tonight.